Hello everyone, I just recently got a new camera and I figured I would try my hand at video reviews and I figure why not do my first review over the first entry into the SH Monster Arts line and review the SH Monster Arts Godzilla 1994. The first entry into the SH Monster Arts line is sculpted by the monster master Yuji Sakai and despite it being the first figure in a line that is starting to test the waters in the latest in monster technology how good is this figure two years later? All right, let's start with the sculpt on Godzilla. It is near flawless. The sculpt is absolutely fantastic. You can see every bump and every ridge on Godzilla's chest, his legs, thighs, knees, his tail, on the underside, you can see the markings on the dorsal plates, the back of the neck, the head, the ears, the nose, even on the inside and the mouth. Let me zoom in on that a little bit here. If you look really, really close, you can see both rows of teeth on the top and the bottom. And if you look at the tongue, you can see there are bumps on the tongue. That is attention to detail if I have ever seen it. Now, in regards to the paint, Godzilla's claws, as you can see here, are both white. They're all white, both hands. And they start off on the, at the tip as a nice solid white, and they slowly go into a little bit of a grain, mixing in with the black on the fingers, the toes, the same thing. And on the dorsal plates, they're nice blue color. Looks like Godzilla is about to charge up and fire his atomic breath, but personally I would have preferred more of the gray, silver, white color that is closer to the film version. But eh, looks like he's about to charge up, like I said. Unfortunately, either over time or out of the box, I don't remember, but the paint is starting to rub off on the tips of the dorsal plates. That could just be, I guess you could say, a weathering effect of some sort straight out of the box, but it's not entirely uniform, which makes me think it's possibly some sort of paint rub. I, I don't know. I mean, it really isn't that big of a deal, but it's worth mentioning to some people that need perfection out of it and also uh, something else about Godzilla it's it's paint related since they would be decals but there's one quality control issue that Godzilla has and you're looking at him but quite frankly you can't tell if he's looking at you sometimes the eyes the eyes are decals and the decals are not positioned correctly for the sockets on the eyes. Both in the first production run and in the second production run, Godzilla's have been affected by this. But if you need this to be fixed, or if you would like it to be fixed, it can be done because the eyes are connected to this inner piece here on the mouth. That is connected to these. Those two there. It's actually one piece. If, you're, if you remove the jaw, this par portion of the sculpt is all one piece and this sits inside of a little cavity. And it can be removed. I'm not going to tell you how because I've never done it myself. But there are guides out there on the internet and certain angles like let's oh no that's not a good one let's say here eyes look fine look a little bit off there but yeah S some are really bad mine came out just a little bit less than fine but yeah overall the sculpt and paint on Godzilla is excellent okay one of the main parts of the SH Monster Arts line, alongside Amazing Sculpt 
and accuracy to the film is articulation. Godzilla has more than enough articulation here, but the, one of the problems with this particular figure is the range of articulation. Let's go through it from the head on down. So, the head. Basics. The actual skull part here with the neck is on a ball joint, and it can move around easy enough. The mouth, <laughs> it's on a ball joint, and you can have some fun with it. Yeah. <laughs> with the eyes, that is quite a combo. Godzilla also features a joint in the neck, which it doesn't have too much range. I mean, you can help it look down, help them look up, but what you can do is you can kind of pop the ball joint off. It's on a ball joint, and you can sort of have them look up, but it kind of looks like he has a bulge there. And uh, if you do it too much, you can easily just pop the head off. I mean, it requires a bit of force, but as you can see, it's a ball joint. Next up, Godzilla features ball jointed shoulders. Ooh, ah, yep. Uh, bicep swivel. Elbow features. I guess it's a standard figure arch joint that they would use for elbows because you kind of have a little bit of a, a swivel there. You can see I'm not moving the bicep, but uh, it is like a swivel hinge combo. And the hands are on a ball joint. So, basic arms there. Godzilla's waist. The waist. Um, hmm. Not too much in terms of articulation here, except for you're able to have him look down. Help him look down a little bit more. He can look down. He can sort of kind of go back. Not really. Dorsal plates kind of hindering it. And you can sort of... Uh, yeah, you can see in between these two plates there. Uh, sculpt blocks it from going up too well. He can turn from side to side. As you can see here. Oh, knocked his mouth there. Side to side. Yeah, basics. Now for one of the hindrances on this figure in particular. Godzilla's thighs. The thighs are sculpted relatively well. Oh, they're sculpted, sculpted really well. But that's about as far out as they go, which is actually a lot better than I remember. But it is the front and back. That is a bit of a hindrance. Solid, but what the problem here is, is that this little ridge, these ridges here, grind up against this little lip here to prevent it from going forward more, and this backing here prevents it from going back further because it bumps into the sculpt again. Basic knees on Godzilla, nothing to sing to the heavens about. It's a hinge. And the feet ball jointed. Godzilla's tail. <laughs> I absolutely love this thing when I first pulled it out of the box. At the base, there's little to no articulation. If anything, I wouldn't say it's permanent. You can just move it. Yeah. But there are multiple segments on Godzilla's tail that are ball jointed. And as you can see, you can kind of do whatever you want with it. And it's articulated all the way up until this part here, which is about nine segments long. Uh, my Godzilla's tail, it came relatively solid. But one of the problems with it is that when I first got him, I would do this with it. Yeah, that's just how much I loved it. I ended up making all the ball joints loose on the tail. But aside from that abuse, even coming up to close to two years... Godzilla is still, all the joints are as tight as they were the day I took it out of the box, and some interesting poses can be taken with it, and let me see if I can get it right, but I've done it before. He can balance on one foot. How many Godzillas do you have that can do that? accessories come with what you see here unless you have the first production run then you will receive Godzilla's thermonuclear breath
It's made of a clear plastic and it comes with this energy base Whoa. here that makes it look like you know it's like a shockwave from the blast and it also comes with a standard Tamashi Stage Act 4 arm yeah plugging in plugging it into Godzilla's mouth effortless bada boom and yeah ah yeah that's the problem with it um this little indent well, this little indent here, it doesn't agree too well with the stage act arm. So if you bump it hard or something, it's going to come off. So let's try getting that back into Godzilla's mouth one more time. Yeah. I mean, looks all right. Not going to complain too much pretty solid. It's good. First run bonus. Yeah. Final thoughts. The SH Monster Art Godzilla sports fantastic sculpt, great paint, good articulation, and a little bit more to be desired in the accessories department, unless you receive the first production run bonus, and even then, that probably could have been done a little bit better. Godzilla's MSRP in the United States through Bluefin is $67.99, and despite it being a two-year-old figure and supplies of it around the internet are starting to dry up, one can probably still find Godzilla for about the MSRP, if not a little bit higher. Unless, of course, you come across a deal, and at that point, go ahead and jump on it. Knowing what I know now about the figure, and what else the SH Monster Arts line offers to collectors everywhere, would I still buy this? Yes. Though this may not necessarily be my definitive version of Godzilla, that one's coming in December, this figure, it still has, it still sports some charm. It's the first one in the SH Monster Arts line, and it's a great look at what was to come in the future. Though he may not necessarily be the best figure on the market for Godzilla, he is still definitely the king of the monsters.